So what happens when a narcissist Hoover is unsuccessful? What's that actually look like? What's actually going on on, on both sides? Let's talk through that a little bit. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge that you can access at claritychallenge.net. If you like what you see here, subscribe, rate, review, share anything under the guise of Raw Motivations on all the platforms. But if you like what you see here, subscribe, because you never know when we're going to drop more videos. We drop those daily, but also we go live every once in a while as well. So you want to be able to tune in to some of those events too. Today, when we're talking about Narcissist Hoover, you might wonder like, well, that hasn't really happened to me yet. Well, I would caution you, it probably will. Majority of time, a narcissist will come back into your life. It might be two weeks, it might be two months, it might be two years, it might be 20 years. But a lot of times, we see narcissists come back into your life and try to hoover you into that toxic relationship. Well, today, we want to talk about what happens when they don't get you, when they don't get through to you, when they don't get a hold of you, when they don't suck you back in. What's that actually look like? Well, when we're talking about Hoover, just so everybody knows, a Hoover is the attempt of a toxic person to suck you back in into that toxicity, to bring you back into a place where you are under their control, where they have control over your will, your emotions, your actions, your responses, all those different pieces. And it takes on a lot of different forms. It takes on a lot of different styles, depending on the type of narcissist that you're with or how they relate or interact. But the goal of a Hoover is to get you back. Sometimes that's to make themselves look better because of image. Sometimes that's to save money so they can save on their taxes or not have to deal with a crazy divorce, whatever it might be. But at the end of the day, it is not because of love and it is not because of care. It is just to get you back. Okay, It is a game. It is a game that narcissists play to be able to control, to be able to manipulate you. Now, does every single narcissist out there view it exactly as a game? Not necessarily. There are a lot to do, but not all necessarily, okay? But you need to understand that is how it is played. It is played to get you back. Now, sometimes people are under the impression that like, hey, my narcissist didn't hoover me. They must not have loved me. And the the part that you have to kind of wake up on is if that's your thought process, you need to first step back and understand they didn't care for you to start off with. Majority of people are like, but if they, if they would have hoovered me, then it, they would have showed that they've actually cared. My question typically back to people is, okay, well, then how did they demonstrate care on a day-to-day basis? Because the majority of times, the narcissist doesn't do that. They'll say it, but how do they actually demonstrate it? Don't get sucked up in the idea that a hoover actually means care. A hoover just means control. That's all it is. Okay. Well, when we're talking about this, when a lot of Hoovers uh, work, they just do. A lot of Hoovers are meant to be able to get you back. And we see time and time again that they work. So the question is why? Why do people let toxic people back into life all the time? Why does it actually happen that toxic people come into a person's life and they keep letting them come back into life time and time again? It comes down to it. What I believe is it's because you believe a lie. That's it. You believe a lie of what you want to see in the relationship, what you want to see in the other person. Someone who was inside the Clarity Challenge came up with a a cool phrase the other day that was along the idea that they had positive projection onto the narcissist. They were projecting positive things that weren't there. They were putting stuff on that person thinking they actually care. They actually love, they actually respect me, they actually want me, and all those things they realize later, those are things that I put on them. It wasn't things I actually saw, it wasn't things that they actually demonstrated, but it was things that I put on them. It was lies that they end up believing about the other person. A lot of Hoovers work and people let a toxic person back into life because they believe a lie over the facts. They believe fantasy over reality. They ascribe to that trauma bond, that hope, that potential that that person might change, that they might get better, and that the relationship might take on a different aspect. And when people get locked locked on to the hope, potential, the maybe, the possibility of that relationship actually coming to fruition, 
a lot of times they will sacrifice a lot of the facts and a lot of the truth of the situation for that fantasy. It's one of the reasons why we developed the book from fantasy to reality, the journal to try to help just like re-engage people with the facts, ask questions to get you centered on what's actually going on. Well, what happens when it doesn't work? What happens when the Hoover doesn't happen and they don't get back with you? When they try or when they attempt and it doesn't happen? Oftentimes is where we see narcissists get even worse. And this is the part that people like don't want to hear because like, I, okay, well, I'm not even sure I want to go no contact because I don't want it to get worse. Well, it typically gets worse before it gets better. That's the piece that we normally don't talk about on the majority of channels that like when you go no contact, when you separate from a narcissist, you thought it was bad with the narcissist, a lot of times it's going to get worse, but it gets a lot better. That's the hard part is a lot of people are scared of that because when it gets worse, you'll see narcissists that come out of the woodwork stalking you more, maybe attacking you, getting upset and getting to a place where the rage is intense. The rage is huge and possibly a lot of times different and more than what it's been in the past. Because part of the reason what's going on here is when a narcissist tries to hoover and it doesn't work, they'll get worse because of the fact of a loss of control. You see, for narcissists, control is king. Control is the aspect that they want to be able to control you and they want to be able to control their image. When it comes down to it, the biggest play there is the image. Like the narcissist has to be able to control how other people see them and experience them and controlling you oftentimes supports that image that they're putting out there. So loss of control is a huge part and it is really hard for narcissists. So a lot of times when a narcissist is coming to terms of like, okay, I might be a narcissist. It's like, what are you actually willing to do and give up to give up that control in order to heal and to grow and to change? Majority of people won't give anything up. That's the hard part. So it reveals that they aren't all that. They aren't what they actually say. They aren't actually in it for the relationship, for the care. And as a result, they're showing up with shame until they get to a place where they're going to gaslight. They're going to uh, compartmentalize things like in their mind of like, okay, like this, this isn't my fault. You know, it's their fault. You know, I can't hoover them back because they're toxic. And so they start switching a lot of things around their mind. Narcissist minds work really crazy as far as like being able to switch and transition things really carefully. It'd be like the idea of slapping another person in the face. And then that person comes back and they start yelling at the narcissist. And the narcissist is like, oh my gosh, they love me because they're interacting with me. Like that's how skewed up it can be a lot of times. But that's the concept is a lot of times the narcissist will get worse. The loss of control is super hard. How they change the thought process to be able to justify what they're doing happens all the time. Okay. Well, sometimes they'll get to the place where they'll start to spiral out even more. And oftentimes they'll start to spiral out even more and even sometimes like go away. But oftentimes they'll spiral out even more in frustration, things like that, when you're taking back your power when you're actually starting to heal, grow, and change. Because that ultimately is when you start to win. Now, sometimes people are like, but it doesn't feel like winning. It's it's not going to feel like winning when you compare yourself to another person. But at the end of the day, when you start to grow, heal, and develop, they start to lose their control, their power, and their influence over you. You start to take back that control, take back that power, and become the person that you were meant to be. Well, when we're dealing with this and the Hoover doesn't work, you actually start to change. There's something that starts to switch. When you actually hold a boundary and hold a barrier there and you don't let that toxic person back into your life, something starts to switch on your healing process. You start to take back your power because they no longer have control over you. You start to identify yourself over the other person. You start to identify your needs you start to find out who you are. It's one of the things that people lose when they're in a toxic relationship is they no longer know who they are and they no longer know how to find themselves. You start to develop self-love. You start to identify the things that really matter and you start to focus because a switch has to happen when you block, when, you, when the Hoover no longer works, you start to focus on your growth versus fixing them. You get to the place where you understand in reality what's going on here, I matter and they don't. 
not in a mean, not in a malicious way, but as far as a self-love, I need to take care of myself versus investing stuff in another person that doesn't care and that's trying to pull me down. You start to develop a passion for you. You start to develop a passion of getting away from people that are toxic, of setting healthy boundaries, of moving in positive ways so that you focus on your growth, on your development, and that is key. When you start to take back your power and grow, develop, heal, and change, you take back your power and you step away from toxicity into a positive arena in a positive world. Last but not least, do any of these things sound hard? or sound really impossible to you, would love to have you reach out and sign up for the 45-Day Clarity Challenge because we walk people through these things to take back your power, to grow, to set up healthy boundaries, to move away from toxicity, to understand yourself of who you are, the direction you're going. Because if people don't know where they're going, they have no ground to be able to set an idea of like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I want. Like, I don't know what to do. They no longer have boundaries. So many people struggle with this. So we put in a lot of time and effort to develop the 45-day challenge to help you get that focus back on you. And the focus in all those areas to help you move through the challenge, to help you move through life, to give you the tools to deal with the triggers that, that plague you every single day. One hour a day could change your life. One hour a day inside the 45-day Clarity Challenge could change your life. 45 days, a couple bonus days, a couple other things we threw in, but 45 days to help you transform your life. Check it out at claritychallenge.net. Start your healing today. So if those things felt or seemed impossible or really hard, they're not. And we find a lot of people that find their healing going through a step-by-step process to help them be successful in their life, in their business, in their family, in their relationships, everything. But it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of effort. And we try to script that out to make it as easy as possible to help it be digestible and a way for you to learn, grow, heal, and change. 